am often bemused that a recommended photographic location, perhaps mentioned in a magazine, is often in a national park, polarising our appreciation of UK scenery. There is an embarrassment of riches at other locations that do not receive the same recognition or praise they deserve, and this is what this programme is all about, but drawn from a selection of just ten. I sometimes have the fanciful thought that should I turn up at a Lake District honeypot like Ashness Bridge, I will first have to join a queue of other photographers. However, the real skill is to turn up at a honeypot like Ashness Bridge when nobody else is about, but explaining that will have to wait another day. East Quantock's Head in Somerset is only a few miles from Exmoor National Park, but within the Quantock Hills area of outstanding natural beauty, a second tier of protection after a national park. From the village itself worthy of your attention, take a public footpath to the beach less than half a mile away. Here the unique rock formations will fascinate photographers for hours a feature also repeated across the Bristol Channel on the Glamorgan coast. You may have passed the lane leading to Del Quay on your way to West Wittering, a popular bathing beach for sun seekers. Parking is limited at Del Quay. It might be best to walk from Fishbourne, where there used to be a Roman villa. It is less popular than Bosom Quay. Delkey is photogenic at any time, but facing west, it is magic at sunset. To make your day perfect and to park the car, why not have a meal at the pub and enjoy a grandstand view of the dying rays of the day, perfected, of course, by an excellent meal. Purists climb St. Martha's Hill from Chilworth, less than a mile away. There is a car park, but still a bit of a climb to the church that crowns its summit. I have visited St. Martha's in all weathers, most memorably when I got caught in a late afternoon shower, so I popped inside the church for refuge. This wide-ranging view encompasses much of the Surrey Hills, popular with locals and visitors from London, but not so well known elsewhere. So we keep this little secret to ourselves. So don't tell anyone, will you? Bedfordshire is not a county that has you rushing to for photographs. You probably get no nearer than Toddington services on the M1. Why not take the next exit and surprise yourself and enjoy the place to yourself? However, Dunstable Downs on the Chiltern Ridge is popular and worth a look on the right day. You need clarity of light and not just a good camera and technique to make it work. Dunstable and Luton are not far, but the ridge westwards extend to Ivinghoe Beacon in neighbouring Buckinghamshire, which I have featured in another video. Make a day of it! Whipsnade Zoo is not far, and neither is the Tree Cathedral. Or why not visit one of the county's old world villages? Their architecture might astonish you. It is strange how certain places do not make the final count when considered for inclusion in a national park. And Tegg's Nose, just outside Macclesfield, is a prime example. But don't let that put you off from a visit. There is a car park, but the more energetic may like to indulge in a 16-mile round walk from Macclesfield, which I did from the railway station, and describe in another video. Previously used for quarrying, apparatus from this former industry is displayed, but it is the extensive views from the top that excite most visitors today. There is a tea shop and usual facilities for your own personal comfort. Driving along a pleasant country road, in this case the B6341 from Annick to Rothbury, a glorious view suddenly opens up 
of the distant Cheviot Hills. We are not in Northumberland National Park yet, but this view is the perfect introduction. This is Corby's Crags, and as you start the descent, there is limited roadside parking on the right. After spending some time admiring and photographing this splendid panorama, drop down to Edlingham. Or do we pronounce it Edlingham? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, it is in view from the crags and explore its church and castle. If you don't already know about this view, you won't be disappointed, but choose the right day. Although popular locally, I suspect that everyone else charging down the M4 motorway to places further afield will overlook the attractions of the Glamorgan coast. If you are heading for Gower or Pembrokeshire, Dunraven Bay is worth a diversion, even for a longer stay to admire its dramatic sweeping bay facing the Bristol Channel and rock scenery. Again, I have already produced a separate video of this delectable area, featuring a priory church painted by Turner and Ogmore Castle, and both are on the way. The borderland between Wales and England, known as the Marches, is a fascinating place for exploration, and not often on a photographer's hit list. The distinctive Welsh architecture gradually asserts itself the further you move into Wales, but on its borderland there are still architectural influences more akin to what you might expect from Shropshire or Herefordshire, and it is this mix that I like about Montgomery. After exploring the town, gird up your loins and climb the hill for its castle, not just for its architecture now in ruins, but the stupendous vistas back over the Vale of Montgomery and into Shropshire. Sometimes my planning goes spectacularly wrong. On this occasion I blame Queen Victoria. First, let me take you up Krigawa, just outside Pitlochry, for the distant view of Loch Tumble. Queen Victoria was utterly captivated by this lock, but not, I hasten to add, from here. Known as Queen's View, a viewing platform has been constructed overlooking the lock. So far, so good, but now with better access, a few more visitors have beat me to this fabulous place. Still, it was worth the wait, and it wasn't long before I had the place to myself. Sometimes a fabulous photographic gem is quiet because of its lack of facilities, particularly toilets. Castle Turum is one such place. Parking is easy, but that's about it. So take sandwiches and a drink, and there are plenty of bushes which I can vouch for. The prize is a remote ruined castle on a tidal island. So be warned, otherwise you might end up staying the night. Because of the amazing vastness of this place, there are countless other photo opportunities where the superb clarity of light fresh off the Atlantic is a godsend. Shortly after leaving the main road, look out for a lovely old bridge over the River Shiel. It's on the left and accessible. There is a parking space, just about, but only for one vehicle. I am often surprised how ill-informed some photographers are about the scenery of the British Isles. On one occasion, when presenting a lecture to a club, a member of the audience suddenly asked if I would run out of places to photograph. National parks play an important role in looking after our countryside, but they tend to polarise our views, with the assumption that whatever is outside a national park is not worth considering. There is a second level of protection, and they are areas of outstanding natural beauty, known as AONBs, and there are over 40. 
Many of my selections are located within these designated areas, but don't stop there. My local woodland is administered by the City of London Corporation. It does not lie within an AONB or national park, but it is still very photogenic. Maybe a video about photogenic landscapes not protected by a national park or an AONB is my next challenge.